John chapter 6, beginning 66 to 69. And I would like to entitle my sermon this morning, For in Jesus we found everything, isn't it? The Lord completed our lives, not money, praise the Lord. The Lord completed our lives, not our achievements. The Lord completed our lives, not worldly uh, pleasures. Thank God. I would like us now to read verses 66 to, six to 69. We are in John chapter 6. Here we go. After this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer walked with him. So Jesus said to the twelve, Do you want to go away as well? Simon Peter answered, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. And we have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One, the Holy One of God. Jesus answered them, Did I not choose you? The twelve, and yet one of you is of the enemy. He spoke of Judas, Judas the son of Simon Iscariot, for he, one of the twelve, was going to betray him. God bless the reading of his word. I would like to invite us this moment, if you as well can bow with your heads, and we're going to commit ourselves to the Lord Almighty. Amen and amen. Let's give the Lord one of praise. You please be seated, son. I like us to know that when everything else is offended, that offense actually, brothers and sisters, become one of our brightest moments to reaffirm our faith in Christ. Let me tell you as we follow the Lord, there are these instances where the Lord intentionally and deliberately offend to as many as he could to test our faith and our commitment to him hello amen say the word offense in our passage that we are reading thousands already have been following the law can you just imagine by the way sir we're like almost a hundred or more or less than a hundred now church rain they are stopping uh, the rest of the brethren, and we also have another service in the afternoon. But Jesus, comparing the, the kind of crowd following the Lord, it was by the thousands already. And think about the trivialness of his time. No microphone, no microphones, no technology, no nothing, bare voice, on yells and on bare shouts. Think about it. But people cannot be stopped in, you know, approaching and, uh, you know, making a throng around to the Savior. But the Lord in chapter chapter 6 of John would have to do something deliberate. It was intentional that, you know, uh, to, a new, to a new believer, this will boggle your mind understanding. Why would the Lord do it? That He personally, He personally were challenging those crowd. Hey, you still have the chance to turn your backs away. So as many as you you are offended and do not like me, leave me already. I mean go. And read the whole of the story. Jesus at one time spoke about, blatantly and frankly told the people, you only are following me not because you love me. You only are following me because you want the eternal life. You do because you want to eat bread. You do for other reasons. And Jesus said, unless you eat my flesh and drink my and drink my very blood, you cannot enter into the kingdom of God. And make no story short, it was now the reason why the people started to be offended. To be offended of the Lord. And they said, hey, why are we following him? I mean, he's only a Nazarene. Why are we following him? He's only a carpenter. Their mind was started to be open, not for the good. Their minds were started to be, to be open on worldly things. I like us to say the word worldly things. When we follow the Lord, we do not because we are after of worldly things. Earthly things are just but passing ones. In a blink, they can be gone. We follow the Lord for the real stuff. We follow the Lord because in Him, we find eternal life. Amen? Amen. Let's give the Lord a clap of praise. 
acquaintance, but by the thousands started to turn the backs away from God. You just imagine. Now, let, let me tell you, when you hear of churches, and when you know, God forbid, that we have in our church, thank God, because, you know, we are uh, deepening our, our good foundations that, you know, our, our focus can give to the Lord and all things. But when you hear of believers, Christians are starting as well to turn the backs away from God because of some offense. Offended to a pastor, offended to a brother, offended to a sister. I'll start not to, do, to go to church. Why? Because everyone is being shake hand except me. Everybody is being kissed, everybody is being up, but me. Why they, can't they hug me? Why can't they kiss me? Why can't they shake me hand? Shallow reasons. Offended. And then stop already to turn the backs. Oh, I cannot anymore go to church because pastor uh, only attend his family and to those people and, uh, and giving me less, uh, giving me less attention. Offense would start and can happen. And to the story, Jesus even went to the twelve because the Lord said the twelve were his chosen. You know, in the calibration of the Bible, ladies and gentlemen, it goes to be the deepest faithful. Jesus said, many are called, few are chosen. The twelve, according to Jesus, you are chosen. But God would have even to shake the chosen, and we would go to the fewer, the faithful. In Revelation, it says that, you know, uh, the, the called, the chosen, and the faithful, the called, the chosen, and the faithful are the ones who can follow the Lamb. Many are called, take it. Many are called, few are chosen, and fewer are faithful. Hello? Amen. I like you to look to someone else and say, by God's grace, I shall be faithful to Him. Come on. <laughs> Let's give God a clap of praise if you will. Please. He told the twelve, Oh, I thought you already left. Why are you still are around? I mean, if you could be alone, with Jesus, he was a brutal teacher. I mean, he doesn't apologize when truth will have to be spoken, he will have to. The Pharisees hated him. The religious people nailed him on the tree. Because Jesus never was afraid to speak the truth. For him, he was the life, the, uh, he's the way, the truth, and the life. And Peter now, after hearing Jesus, from the recesses of his soul, starting, I mean, because when Jesus would talk on a, la, on a line, uh, thousands of words could raise, you know, on the back of your head. Because, you know, the, the wealth of his, his word to be speaking out, I mean, to be coming out from his mouth, thousands of those were raising on the back of the head of Peter. And though Peter here, uh, it wasn't recorded, it was emotional, but it seems... I presume he was. Tears were starting to fall from his eyes. And he stood before the Lord and he said, Lord, where we go? If you will let loose of us, where we go? We already left our homes. We already burned our bridges. How can we turn our backs in you? Because in you we have found eternal life. And as to churchy, let me say it. You know, in a layman's term, Peter, in behalf of the twelve, was telling the Lord, for in you, we have found everything. Thanks be to the living God, in Jesus we found our real joy. Amen. Amen. Uh, don't get me wrong, God would like to give us success. Don't get me wrong, God would like us to bless Bless our lives, our families, literally, literally. God would like to give us money. God would like to give us uh, good connections. God would like to uh, promote us. God would like to give us success. I mean, all of these material things, palmable, palmable things. Well, to some degree, it can give us a little smile. Huh? Huh? But let me tell you, when, when the dust will start to settle, Every time when a day ends, when you retreat and drop on your bed, then real, reality will always see to you that there will always be one factor that can fill and satisfy so much 
the vacuum, the emptiness inside of you is just what the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's give God a clap of praise. <laughs> Let me remind us this morning as we are here. Jesus completed us. Amen? Amen. That's why in any endeavor we engage, when Jesus is there, go for it. Any, any, anything that you engage when it, when, uh, when he is sin, when he is lifted up, go for it. Because it will be a personal satisfaction. But on the other way, when God's not there, don't hesitate to drop them. Don't, don't hesitate to forget it. Don't, don't hesitate to wave your hand and say bye and see you no more. For in Jesus only we can find satisfaction. Amen? Yeah. Son, I forgot my, uh, my remote control. Praise the Lord. Remember, it will always be blessings every day. Say the word blessings. 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 Remember, it will not be all blessings every day. Trials will always be part of the growing process. Amen? Yeah. Not always be honey, it will not always be sweet, it will not be always sugar, it will always be uh, comfort, it will always be convenience. It's a guarantee. Ladies and gentlemen, there will be sometimes we go through trials. Why? Because trials are part of the growing process. I'm talking about that offense. Huh? Because there, there are believers who say, Lord, when I wasn't serving you, when I was a drug addict, when I was, you know, a drunk, I always had money. But how is this? I'm now born again. I'm now fat every day going to church. But the price is still not money now. What's that? I mean, what the difference? Maybe I'll have to, to return back to go back to my own life. I don't know. I have a pastor friend telling me that there is you. Remember, in his church was a killer. <clears throat> I mean, a high killer. At the same time, also a drug, a drug pusher. Uh, and, and, and this brother, you know, uh, way before he got born again, he really had some apple in his pocket because he was being protected by uh, a renowned local politician. I mean, this is a Pogania. But then one day, the Lord uh, arrested him. <laughs> the Lord got him. He went into a process, he got born again. And there was that price. Because when we follow the Lord, it will always cost. Amen? We always feel it, and uh, the, the family now do not have money. Uh, the kids complain because they know even price. But you know, every day they're very happy because they're they're that experience, they're that uh, real satisfaction in their hearts as we follow the Lord. My wife and I, sir, has been pastors for 20, 23 years. Twenty three years, no father, no. Uh, vacation 23 years 24 7 within in the service of God we have our ups thank, thank God so many but we also have our downs but we're very proud we dragged this around in the whole of our 23 years Jesus is the best thing that ever happened in all of our lives God's giving me a lot of breaks with it this year. My privilege in uh, going back to school. That's why I met, I met again uh, attorney, Nagata. And uh, I'm writing, beginning this week, my second column uh, in Samboga today. For 19 years I have been in Samboga Times. And uh, Sambonga, Sambonga today, my newer column is kind of another prestigious one because it's current affairs. I thought of I would be just, you know, in the opinion page, uh, inside the page, way in the middle where people boringly read if they have time, they have spare. But you know what? <laughs> the editor in chief instead placed my column to the editorial page where why spots it? You know, uh, the icing of the cake. But, in, in the whole of my life, Jesus has been the very best. The very best that ever happened. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So that is why, ladies and gentlemen, when, when there are 
wrong things to happen seem and the Lord is is uh, you know at the opposite where where the flesh is making a pool of you and pushing you give him up be willing to, to uh, be willing rather to lose anything anything natural or anything physical like money like your phone like even your name to lose this you know natural things you describe these things but listen to me never lose God are you with me amen yeah. let's give the Lord a cup of praise two more things I'd like to say on are you still with me amen yeah. here we go never as I said a while never give give up nor trade your faith in Christ never never son we must be aware of convenience, say the word convenience. Yes. Uh, because the chasm after it is very deep. Convenience. How is that? When you are on tough times, it pushes you to be closer to God. Really? On tough times? Because you pray the more. <laughs> you kneel often. But when comforts come, when you start to have a better job, higher salary, when you start to have more of the blessings because that is our destiny. Like, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, you and me as children of God, our destiny is to be blessed. Amen? Amen. Jesus said, I have come to give you life and have it more abundantly. But we are to be aware every time we are in convenience. Because when, when we are we are in this level and gradually or eventually are able to trade God or give Him up after it will be such a deep chasm. You know what's a chasm? Chasm is a ravine. And when one falls in this chasm, deep will be the fall and uh, destruction will be irreparable sometimes. Irreparable sometimes. Solomon. When he was young, naive, and had nothing, came to God, cried to God, and asked the Lord, Grant me wisdom, Lord. Grant me wisdom. God was very happy of him. In fact, God bragged around of him. Solomon, are you still there? Amen. But because of the wisdom that God gave of him, promotion happened so very fast until Solomon started to forget God. And in his convenience, he fell to this chasm. I also remembered or heard this story about this monkey. Hello, are you there? Now, this is just for the story. Uh, the wind got so offended to this monkey that the wind blew the monkey so hard. And the monkey felt the strength of the wind that he grieved so much to this branch that the monkey despite did not fall from the tree. Now, the wind thought of, I'll do another strategy. Instead, the wind blew very softly to the monkey. When the monkey was still on the grip, now the wind, now very soft. Oh, this is very comfortable, this is very convenient. I mean, the monkey started to doze. The monkey started to be like sleepy and then by and by he didn't know he succumbed to sleep. And he was falling into sleep, he forgot he was holding the branch. And the next thing you already know, he fell, you know, hit his, his head uh, to a rock and the, the monkey died. Now turn to someone else and say, I'm not that monkey, come on. <laughs> Amen. Ladies and gentlemen. We need to. Sister Dahlia would have to talk to me one time, telling me, ah, uh, so one day I will have a lawyer husband. God willing, sir. <laughs> so I have a husband, a DJ. So I have a husband, and he mentioned to me all of this, but never forget he had a calling. And he smiled, I said, yes. I'm, I'm thankful to the Lord because you're praying for me. Isn't it? Amen? Amen. 
I'm thanking God, thanking God because I have a family supporting me and praying for me every day. Because as any human being, we are subject to weaknesses. We are susceptible. We survive every day only for by the grace of God. Not because we are good, not because we're clever. We do because the grace of God helps us every day. Amen? So I'd like you to, to place your palm to your chest and say that with me. I shall be aware <laughs> in convenience. Okay. The last and the, uh, this is the second and the last. Here we go. God always rewards the faithful. Everybody say, say amen. 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 The Lord blesses the obedient. Amen. Going back to the story, the passage we read, all of those who turn their backs away are nowhere to be seen in the Bible. Their last was only in chapter John, uh, chapter 6 in John. But those who keep to continue, the, the 12, well at this time including Steve Judas, their name were scribbled in the Bible. Even to now, we continue to know their lives, we continue to study, we continue to reflect into their lives. Because of their faithfulness, God rewarded them. Because of their obedience, God blessed them. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to end my sermon by saying, come what circumstances, come what convenience to happen all around us, by God's grace, let's stay faithful and let's stay obedient unto the Lord. For in Jesus, we have everything. Amen. Amen. You receive it this morning. Amen. Amen. Let's give God love and praise. Let's all stand. I'm going to rise.